Building an indie business in the center of venture capital. I am Alex Edmonds. Uh, people on the internet call me Supreme Rum Ham. Um, this is the Building an Indie Business podcast recorded in the Indie Business Studio. Um, okay, so today you can tell that I forget the intro, um, but yeah. So today I'm going to be talking about expired domains. Uh, I'm going to be talking about what's the difference between an expired domain and a created domain, um, revenue ideas, uh, revenue reducers, expenses, the risks you're taking, speculation, uh, my opinion, problems. So yeah, this is a revenue research episode. I haven't done these in a while because I haven't had anything to write about. So yeah, let's get into it. Expired domains versus created domains. So what is the difference? Um, An expired domain is a domain that someone previously created and didn't want to renew. Um, And then a created domain is one where you created it yourself. So um, the difference in terms of, you know, why buy an expired domain is basically an expired domain already has value. You know, it has backlinks. It has um, it has an age, right? Because age matters in um, to Google. I don't know why. I just based on that. So, uh, if this domain that is expired has a lot of value already created, then it's a little easier to sell, um, especially if you're. Selling to an audience that knows SEO and wants a domain for SEO, then um, they will pay more money for this um, expired domain. Um, So actually, I'd like to say that when you buy it, it's an expired domain. And then when you purchase it and you're selling it, it's an age domain. That is the difference. Um, Okay. Then... Another um, comparison to a created domain is I don't need to create the value myself. So when you create a domain like um, Revenue Research, I started from zero in terms of backlinks, in terms of SEO. So I had to go and find the backlinks and increase the domain authority myself. For any of the domains that I've sold previously, um, those already had a uh, decent uh, backlinks and domain authority. So um, I did put those um, on my personal websites, the show notes to increase the backlinks, but I didn't need to do that. Okay. So um, another thing about these age domains is that um, some may have been created by someone who, you know, is a writer and knows how to get high value on backlinks. So you might end up with a expired domain or age domain that maybe has a link from Forbes or, you know, Thrillist, um, a established publication that will bring a lot of value to the domain. Um, And for that reason, um, a downside of an expired domain or an age domain is that um, they typically are more expensive, right? Because you're you're buying it from someone, um, someone or a platform that knows that it has value, right? And I... I I am in the process of buying a domain from someone. Um, I'll talk about that more later. But yeah, I had to pay more money for that domain that was owned by someone compared to creating the domain or buying an expired domain, right? Um, But the advantage is that it has established domain authority and traffic, which will help me rank um, higher in Google compared to a domain where I created it and I have to create the value myself. Right. Okay. 
Uh, revenue ideas. Software to determine if a domain has value. So I see a lot of software that it'll tell me like, yeah, it is this many backlinks. Here's its domain authority. Um, so it kind of tells me the value, but there's still some things that are missing in terms of what I'm looking for in expired domain. Um, yeah, and then there are marketplaces, right? But for people looking for exactly an expired domain, but they're not good. So, like, what I want to know is, yeah, it has this many backlinks, it has this domain authority, but how does it compare to others in the industry, things like that, or what can I use this domain for, right? So, yeah, and then there's an issue with um, expired or aged domains where, I'll talk about this more in risks, but um, they're, like I haven't found a software that determines how many of those backlinks are spam, right? So I'd like that to be something. This is all basically just one idea where it has like, one idea with the bullet points is something I want. Really? Okay. Revenue reducers. Okay. So you buy a domain and then you put it on a platform to sell. When you put it on a platform to sell, that platform will take a percentage of your sale price. Um, so that's a revenue reducer. Um, okay. So expenses of an expired domain. Okay, so there's the purchase. You purchase it for 80 to 100 or you're lucky and you get it for $10. You purchase it, and then someone buys it. You have the marketplace uh, fee, and then you have the transfer fee, right? So um, it might cost you money to transfer the domain from pork bun to GoDaddy, right? So that's another fee that you have to keep in mind. And then there's a renewal fee. So let's say it takes you more than a year to sell the domain. You have to renew the domain. And that's another expense that you will run into. Right. Okay. Risks. Okay. So uh, the domain you bought may have been blacklisted. So this goes back to the software to determine the percentage of spam backlinks. Um, sometimes when a domain has a lot of spam or it's, um, you know, it's, uh, it's got a lot of spam backlinks, Google might blacklist this domain and then you can't get it to rank and that defeats the purpose of buying and expired or aged domain um yeah so then it's just a waste of money but if it's a really nice domain um someone might be willing to buy it and maybe work on that and fix that you never know okay then you might have no buyers so let's say you spend fifty dollars to a hundred dollars on a domain and you think it's good but you know you put it on all these marketplaces and no one's buying it you know then you just lost some money and that might happen um i know that there's a process of selling domains in bulk you might get like a hundred domains for five thousand dollars some of those domains are going to be duds and so you can't sell them, but, you know, maybe out of those 100 domains, you can sell 50 of them for $1,000. Um, so you've made money there, right? And then another issue is that um, these domains have backlinks, right? And some of them are from publications that look at their um, content regularly and they might see that the thing that they link to is no longer there so um 
you know, so let's say you bought a domain that used to be a blog and someone links to that blog post. They might see that it's no longer there and remove that link. And so you lose uh, domain authority there in a backlink, right? Um, and that will happen. Um, all the domains that I've sold, they have lost their domain authority. I, I a best startup tool that had like a domain authority of nine when I bought it. And it ended at like four when I sold it, right? And I, I added backlinks to it. So that's a risk you're going to take. Um, and then the final risk is that you don't know what that previous expired domain that you just bought um, was in a previous life. So let's say um, you buy best startup tool or like, I don't know, wpthemes.com. You buy wpthemes.com and you want to use it for WordPress themes. You want to sell WordPress themes. And you buy it at an expired domain auction. Um, who Who's to say that that was the previous owner's intention as well? Like, who knows if it was related to WordPress? WP Themes could have been like an alt-right website or, you know, a porn website. So, um... The existing traffic that's coming to the website might be related to that previous topic. And that will decrease the um, the amount of uh, time on site. Um, and it'll increase the bounce rate, which is a ranking factor. right? So you got to watch out for that. Um, the way to look at this stuff is to go to the Wayback Machine. Yeah. That's the website, um, waybackmachine.com, I think. And you can see, like, snapshots of what the domain was um, every couple of months. So you can go back to, like, 2021 and see what that domain was doing. And if it was doing something that, you know, you don't like or you think is sketchy, then, you know, maybe consider not buying that domain, right? Okay. Um, speculation. So, um, I did a previous episode on the marketplaces that I've had a successful sale on. And, uh, so I've bought like maybe 10 to 15 domains and I've sold four of them. Yeah, four or five of them. And I've sold two on the same platform, but I, I've listed them on like 10 to 15 um, marketplaces. So I'm still kind of wondering, like, what is the best selling platform for domains? Like, it might be Seto. It might be Swapped. It might be Porkbun Marketplace. It might be DN Form. I don't know. I'm still trying to figure that out. That's one thing I'm still trying to figure out, right? Um, and then another issue I'm having is I was hoping to you know, turn over these domains a little quicker, like maybe sell them in three months. And that hasn't happened for me. I've sold one uh, pretty quickly. I sold alerts for Bitcoin.com in a couple of weeks. Um, and that was a fluke because I thought um, this it was going to be like that for every other domain. Um, but I'm wondering, like, is there something I'm not telling the buyers that would convince them to buy it. Um, so I need to find out that information, right? <sighs> yeah. And then the final question I have is, does domain authority actually matter when you're selling domains? So uh, my first expired domain purchase was um, topexamdump.com. And the reason why I bought it is because I put it in Hrefs and I saw that it had a domain authority of 50. And 50 is really good for domain authority. That'll get you ranking 
uh, in the first page for pretty much anything. Uh, maybe like five to 10,000 searches a month, which is really good. And I've, I can't get rid of it. Like, um, people just don't want it. And I've tried every platform. I've tried Seto, Pork Bun, not Pork Bun, actually. I haven't tried Pork Bun. Seto, uh, Dan.com, Brand Bucket, Swapped, and they, no one's biting. So I'm wondering, like, does domain authority actually matter in terms of selling? Because you can't see domain authority right away on all of these platforms. So do people even consider domain authority when they're buying domains? Um, so yeah, I'm wondering that. Yeah, okay. And then my opinion. I like dom expired domains. Um, once you learn where to sell them, it's only a matter of finding uh, the right domain. And that makes it seem a little, you know, it's not that complicated once you figure out what you're doing, right? And that's what I like about it. I should have more. Uh, better opinion, but that's all I have right now. Um, problems. Competition. So, um, like I said, I bought one of my domains, two of my domains. I bought Let's Travel Tour .com, uh, at auction. And the problem with auctions is that you might get caught up in a bidding war. So, you and someone else might really like this domain you might like buy let's travel tour.com and then someone else does and then you get caught in a bidding war in the auction you know going back and forth like hey i'll pay 80 i'll pay 85 the other guy's gonna pay 90 then you just keep getting that domain uh high up and then you're overpaying for it right Yes, okay, and then another problem that I have and I hate so much is spam. Um, hold on. Okay, I'm back. Uh, through the magic vetting, that was no uh, delay for you, but it was for me. Um, anyways, spam. So, um, when you buy a domain, all your information is registered to ICANN, which is like, the organization that handles um, all the domains and the information. Um, and, like, to check who owns the domain, all you have to do is go to who is lookup and type in the domain you want or you want to look at. And some domain uh, places, marketplaces, will not hide this information. Um, and you put your name your phone number, your email, and some cases your address. And some marketplaces will hide this information for you unless you say, hey, I, w I want this information out there um, in case you're selling it, right? Which I am, but uh, that's, yeah, I'm selling it on marketplaces, not like direct. Um, so yeah. Um, and so on top exam dump, and let's travel tour.com i bought those and the registry was network solutions and network solutions makes you pay to um to hide this information and um i didn't pay for that because i'm cheap right so um people would call me Asking me if I needed a website developed for those two domains. And I uh, I started getting these calls like once a day. And then I noticed that once I sold Let's Travel Tour.com, these calls were reduced. Right. Um, so, yeah. And then what I do to avoid these... Um, these emails, these, well, the emails go to my spam, but the calls, what I do now is I have a Google voice number and on the registry, that's the number I use. And so I can, you know, not get all of these calls, right? 
it's it's reduced, right? Okay. And then another problem that I have is 60 day lock. So I can, as I just mentioned, handles all of this domain stuff. And uh, they put a 60 day lock on transferring a domain. So if you want to sell the domain, you have to wait 60 days before you can transfer it. Um, they will not allow you to transfer it in under 60 days. But um, a way to get around this um, this issue is you can do a transfer within the registry. So if you buy it on Porkbun, you can transfer it to another Porkbun user and other platforms, right? Um, yes. Um, problem, finding the best platform to buy them. Yeah, so another problem I have is, you know, I buy it on Pork Bun, I buy it on Namecheap, and I don't know the best, If are those the best platforms to be using to buy and sell domains? I don't know, right? Um, I have to figure that out on my own. I do like Pork Bun, I do like Namecheap, that's why I keep continuing to buy them, but there are others out there, and I don't know if those are the best two. I know it's not GoDaddy. I know it's not Network Solutions, but there are others out there. So, you know, there's two eliminated, but there's like 15 other that I have to figure out, right? Okay. Um, Filtering through trash domains. That is another problem I have. So, you know, um, when you buy an expired domains or domain when you buy expired domains or buy an expired domain um you have to filter through all of these domains that expire and some of them are spam right so it's like xx0wyp7- whatever um and you see all of those and there are hundreds of them so when you're looking through the expired domains you have to put really good filters on to find the domains that are worth buying and that's not difficult it's not a huge problem but it is a problem because sometimes you don't add enough filters and you get too many trash domains or um you miss a good domain when you're looking at you know when you have the filters and then uh you might miss a good domain um, on occasion, but, you know, okay. Um, another problem I have is deciding pricing. So, you know, on a lot of the platforms, you can just do a buy now, um, and, cause you have to pay for the auctions, right? And I'm cheap, as I already just said, and I th don't want to pay for the auctions because that's another expense. Um, so... I have difficulty establishing the price for a domain. I don't know if the domain is worth a thousand dollars or two hundred or three hundred. So I just put like, you know, two hundred, two fifty, and if no one buys it at that price, I'll lower it to like one fifty. But maybe that domain is worth like a thousand dollars. I don't know. So it's another issue I have. And then um, another issue that I'm finding is that when you buy an age domain from someone else, uh, sometimes you don't get the social assets. And those social assets might be taken, they might not be taken. So let's say I bought Revenue Research. No, I sold Revenue Research.co. And someone wants to use it for their own publication about finance. I still own, uh, like, the Twitter handle for Revenue Research. Uh, that's not involved in the sale, right? So I still have it. Now that guy owns the domain, but he doesn't own the um, social assets. So that's something that, you know, uh, you might want if you're using the domain for something. All right, so this is a super long episode. I've been doing short episodes lately. My throat hurts. Um, yeah, so this is 
going back to the old 